So, uh, Nasir already introduced me. I am also student of Chunam National University. I'm doing my master's. It's human rights and democracy related subjects called GNMP. So, actually, uh, I would like to introduce a little bit before I go to my topics, the human rights and democracy situation in Bangladesh right now. So I would like to go a few minutes about uh, our country history. So these are the leaders, uh, these three leaders, and Maulana uh, Abdul Hamid Khan Bhashani is called Bhashani, very Bhashani. He was very simple and well the patient, uh, I mean the farmers community, and he was very popular leader. Actually, that sort of uh, Shri Bang like a puzzle up, and uh, his name is uh, Hussein Shri Sorati. So these three leaders, they helped uh, to build this nation, our nation, Bengali nation, especially in Bangladesh. So actually, uh, you know that my country, uh, before 1947, before 1947, it was one country: India, Bangladesh, Pakistan. This three country was one country and it was around 200 years British colony. So we are colonized by the British. So after Second World War, in 1947, British left, so we got the independence. And there are two countries, one India, another Pakistan. So, and 14 August, we got independence from British. And Bangladesh was part of Pakistan. There is two Pakistan, East Pakistan and West Pakistan. So our part, Bangladesh was, at the time it was not name of Bangladesh, it was named East Pakistan. And uh, West Pakistan was the present Pakistan. So there was one country. In, after that, after uh, five years, we had some conflict with Pakistan. You know, this division was very not logical. Like the British, while British was leaving India, their policy was divide and rule. So, of course, there is a Hindu and Muslim conflict, two religious conflict. But British take this as a weapon to divide. And while they divide, the Bangladesh portion, East Pakistan should not go with the West Pakistan. Yeah, West Pakistan. Geographically, it should be with India, or it could be a separate country. But as far as in the religious base, it was uh, divided. Like Muslim majority people, by place should go with Pakistan, and Hindu majority should be with India. It was like that. But historically and culturally, our situation, our people, we are not actually uh, very similar with the Pakistan. So there is a conflict after five years, 1952. There is a language movement. So there is a language movement, it is 1952, just after five years, I got independent for 1947. In 52, there is a language movement because Pakistan wanted that national language should be Urdu. But we say is Pakistan at the time, now Bangladesh. No, we are the majority, so our language should be the national language. That is the Bengali. And Bengali is a very rich language. You know that in Asia, first Nobel laureate in literature, Rabindranath Tagore, he called the Thakur. He also wrote on poems about uh, Korea, the light of East. So Thakur was from my language, Bengali. He is the first Nobel laureate in literature in Asia. And you know that Shottojit uh, uh, Roy in Oscar, and he is the first Oscar laureate, Oscar, uh, one of the actually, from the, from the beginning stage, in Asia, and he is also Bengal. So our language was very rich. So we wanted we fought with Pakistan. You know, Bengali should be the national language because we are the majority. Then there is a conflict, and uh, some of our people, Salam Barkal, Rafiq Jabbar, the name, they've been killed in 1952, 21st February. So this is the first nation in the world, my nation, Bengali nation of Bangladesh. They shed their blood to save their mother language. 
for this latest movement, our people died. So afterwards, in 1999, 27th November, UNESCO, United Nations, they recognized 21st February, uh, 21st February as a uh, international mother language. And it was a great recognition for my nation because my nation is the first nation in the world. They shed, sacrifice their blood, their life to save their mother language. That's why in 1999, UNESCO declared 21st February is the international mother language. And now 2008, since 2008, uh, 200 countries around the world, uh, 21st February, they are observing as the international mother language. Well, I thought that this is the leaders. They help to build our nation. And later on, uh, in 1971, actually it started 1969, there is a education, actually it started with the language problem in 1952, I told you before. And then there is economic imbalance. My nation, Bengalese people are hard working, and our soil was very hard day. We used to produce lots of crops but all the you know industrialization and uh, development works was, would, they would do in Pakistan, West Pakistan, not East Pakistan. So people was very angry. So our leaders was feeling unwanted. People was feeling unwanted. Then there is a war between East Pakistan and West Pakistan. So in 1971, 16 December, uh, we got independence from Pakistan, and uh, now is independent country. And to get this independence, we also sacrificed a lot. Uh, it was nine months war, and three million people died. Bengalese people, our people. And 200,000 our girls been raped by the Pakistani army military. So we sacrificed a lot to uh, get to achieve this country, the land, independent land. And this is the man, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. It's called Sheikh Muji, and he was a very charismatic leader. And he is the founder father of our nation. And uh, this man, actually, you can see, uh, he, he was born in 1920 and he was killed actually in 1975. We got independence in 1971, and he was then killed in 1975. Actually, this leader was being assassinated by the armies and some derailed leaders in the country. Militaries, they killed this man, our founder of the nation of the country. And he was very charismatic leader at the time. At the time, you know that USA and China was with Pakistan. And India, Soviet Union, and Russia was with us. China and America supported Pakistan, and they gave arms, all the supports, only India, and Russia at the time, Soviet Union was supporting us. And we are not actually, it was a great uh, dedication, great sacrifice of our nation. So, but later on I will discuss, after sacrificing three million people, their lives, and 200,000 girls read, what we achieved, and what is the situation now? So that, that things I will discuss. So if you see my country, actually it's a very beautiful country, and our land is very fertile, and our people are very happy, and you know, good-hearted people, common people are very good. In the three years back, Bangladesh, according to the UNESCO uh, survey, Bangladeshi nations were the happiest people in the world. And for the last three years, the Bhutan is now. But three years back, Bangladesh nation was the happiest in the world because we have poverty, or people are not very rich, but people are very happy. Whatever they get, and most of our people are farmers. And still now, 80% people of Bangladesh lives in the village. And village people are, most of them are farmers. They are farming in the lands. So if they get three times food and some plots, few plots, they are happy. So you see that my three side is India. Uh, north, east, west, and southern part is Bay of Bengal, ocean, uh, Bay of Bengal, sea, and this little southern western part is Myanmar. Little, uh, we have little border with Myanmar, 
for three sets India and uh, rest of the southern province C. And you can see very interesting, uh, we have many rivers in the country. Bangladesh is called the uh, Nodi Matrik Desh. It is a country whose mother is the river. Is a country, is the daughter of the river. It is it's called in Bengali Nadi Matrik Desh. So, uh, this land was made by the rivers, and we have uh, 12,000 rivers in the country. 12,000 rivers, whole country crisscrossed by the river, and small and big. This is our official name, the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Uh, so, 147,572 square kilometers, <laughs> and our population is 16 million in the according to the 2015 census. And you see the GDP growth rate is only 6%. It is better than many states of India and many countries. Our GDP is very good. And per head, uh, GDP growth is, you know, that uh, capital income is 1,190 USD. So now it is no more a developing country. It's called developed country. When it's not developed, you know that, um, what is called? Mudbaya dish. Middle income country. We are no more developing country. We are middle income country. But question is whether people are uh, getting their rights properly. The country is developing, but only 10% people are enjoying this well, and 90% people are still suffering. So actually, in our GD, uh, constitutions, our constitution is one of the, uh, you know, very good constitution. Like we have the Bangladesh, it is a secular democratic country, and um, democracy is one of the fundamental principles of Bangladesh constitution. In our constitution, and equality, human dignity, and social justice, it was in our, you know, proclamation of Bangladesh independence. Why it was wars going on? So it was a proclamation based on these two things. Uh, country becomes independent and all people fight for the right. And democracy and human rights are located in the core values of the country and people. So our constitution is very good, but in reality what is going on, uh, we'll see. <coughs> so uh, I told you that uh, Bangabund is the founder father of the nation. Actually he and his party was leading to the independence, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib, and he was been assassinated by the military in 15 August 1975. After that, uh, from 1975 to 1990, 15 years it was uh, under the military rule, and sometimes in the name of democracy, in background uh, army military, and sometimes directly there are some coups, and it was 15 years was under the military rule, and whatever. Bangladesh actually fought for the independence, for their rights in 1971. Many things within 15 years we lost. Because under the military rule, many bad things, bad practices went on. And the constitution also many times been changed to their favor, military's favor. After that, in 1990, there is a big uprising in my country. And here, when there is a Guangzhou Democratic Uprising in 1980s, and in 1987, there is another uprising. So, so like that in 1990s, it was a big uprising in Bangladesh against the military rule. At the time, there was a dictator called Esha, General Esha, who was in power. And uh, he is the, this person. person. Uh, but in the 1990, the uprising, all the political parties, they come together. and and more than 100 people sacrificed their life. And then this army general, he stepped down. And there is an election. It was very fair and good election. And the Democratic Party came to the power in 1991. And once came to the power in 1991, the whole nation was so happy. They thought that, we thought that it was, country is going to be a good direction. Now we got the democracy. After independence, actually, there are few years in 1975, there was some democracy, and after that, 50 years we didn't have a democracy. And then after 1991, the whole nation, 
hope the country will go to the right direction. But what happens, uh, we'll see it later. So this is the general question. It's like, at the time it was like Chundua. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it was so brutal. Uh, I mean, uh, in the 1990s movement. So, this was the 1990 movement when we got the democracy and the procession, how the police is beating the protesters. It is these pictures all are from the 1990s movement. So, it was the Bangladesh came returns to the constitutional democracy in 1991 and uh, then uh, I will not go all just partially. Uh, the, but problem is that people are happy that democracy is restored in the country, but we see that our hope gone to the astray because the political party that was called Bangladesh National Party, BNP, and they came to the power. Actually, this party also been established by ex dictator, but it was better than the that is previous dictators. So many people supported them. But problem is that after this, after one year it was good. Since 1992, the many bad things started happening in the country. Like extrajudicial killing by the enforced, uh, I mean the security forces, like the secret agencies of the country, like the police, and some places army military, especially in the hill tracks. So, I mean that extrajudicial killing and uh, deaths in police custody, police is to beat and people is to die, harassment of the political opponents, and then the, those who are the political parties, they are being harassed a lot, and arbitrary arrest and detention, and the use of the lower judiciary to serve partisan interest to the ruling party, all continue. And in my country, there is a problem that everything being politicized, even the judiciary court, judges, are politicized, whether with this government party, uh, most of the cases government with they are with the government parties, and the police, they are also politicized, and the judici uh, executive bodies, there is a huge corruption, and it started, it was there in the country from the beginning, but now it is slowly, slowly increasing, the situation getting deteriorated day by day. But though we have hoped, we hope that democracy has never restored, so we'll have a good country, good situation, but it never happened. So, so far, we had 10 elections held in the country, and out of them, four elections was very good. There is actually <coughs> other thing is the political parties, they don't believe each other. So, if the party in the power, and he, their term is over, before that they have to arrest the election. But opposition party, they don't believe that those who are in the power, they will arrest the free and fair election. Usually they do lots of you know, corruptions to remain in the power. So there was an arrangement, it's called caretaker government, interim government. And after once parties uh, terms is finished five years, then there will be three months and caretaker government and they will hold the election and that election and that arrangement was good but it was more fair and uh, free election. Uh, four times it was happening but it is like 1991 to 2008. But in 2011 by the court order, actually political party they did it, they removed this provision. So now, this caretaker government is no more. So whoever is the power, they are arranging relation, and they are doing all the nonsense things, all the corruptions, to remain in the power. So actually, last election was 2014. It was the last election in the country. And that election, main opposition party, BNP Bangladesh National Party, they didn't participate in the election. And they actually, they wanted uh, non-elected interim governments. Actually, they wanted a caretaker government. 
If there is a Catholic government, they thought that election would be fair. But present government at the time, they didn't allow that. Already this provision is removed by the court, they're also done by the political parties. And that's why the main opposition party, they didn't go for election. And that was actually, uh, in my country, 300 you know, seats, parliamentary seats, member of parliaments. Out of 300, 157 seats, there is no relation at all. Because there is no opposition party, no candidate. So out of 300 seats, member of parliaments, 157 MP, member of parliaments, they become, uh, I mean, that uh, member of parliaments without any relation. Because the, in their constituency, there is no opposition, only one person. So, it was uh, 2014, yeah, it was very controversial because international community also didn't uh, support this. And one more thing I want to tell you, the army, the government, of course they did it, but they did one good thing. That is the, you know, in 1971, while there is a war, and many people sacrificed their life to get the independence, after the founder of the nation, Sheikh Mujib, was being killed, assassinated in 1975, the military rule during 15 years, all the war criminals, those who are responsible for killing the people, they become the ministers. They become in the power. And the, all the war criminals, you know, uh, they were everywhere, in every big positions. So, this government, uh, only government, what they did, they uh, brought those people, the war criminals, under justice. And they gave them, they given the party clause. So this is the good thing that uh, the government has done. So it was a great shame for the nation. Like you think that say, Chandwa. Of course, he came out, but he was, he served in the jail. He was convicted, and, and the, those who were uh, Gwangju, uh, uh, involved Gwangju democratic uprising, they are being recognized as a national hero. So, these things was not happening in my country many years. Many years. Then, it is more than 25 years. Then afterwards, this government has brought these war criminals under the justice. So, this is the two leaders. Uh, this is the, her name is Khalid Rajia, <coughs> and her name is Sheikh Hasina. And she was Prime Minister three times. And she has seen at this term, she's going to be three times Prime Minister. And she is the daughter of the founding father of the nation, Sheikh Muji, who was assassinated in 1975. His daughter. And this uh, lady, she was, uh, she was the uh, wife of the ex-dictator. He was actually a dictator. But later on, he formed a party, it's called BNP, Bangladesh National Party. But of, of course, uh, they, the, in a dictator, they did some good things uh, to develop their countries. Of course, they did many bad things also, uh, in sense of principle, to, to, to bring the war criminals in the power. So, her husband was president, <coughs> and her husband, uh, father was prime minister and founder, founder uh, of the nation. But, Actually, you know, they always blame them. It's called hate politics in Bangladesh. And these are the two the largest parties in the country. They are always uh, in the power many years. They say, say people don't want you. She is also saying people don't want you. And they are fighting each other. And people are suffering. We want to leave. This is the people. People are burning, suffering because of the two political parties' rivalry and their hate politics and people, uh, there's lots of violence and lots of corruptions, people are suffering and there is a we don't, uh, we won't believe, we just won't believe. But these two leaders are fighting. So, in 2014, when there was election, 5th January, it was one side election, there's no opposition party was there but it is just made, it is called, uh, just, you know, that making some parties. But it's not main opposition party giving participate in the election. So it was one-sided. 
what they did, those who didn't participate in the election, like her party, Khaled uh, party, is called Bangladesh Nationalist Party, what they did, to stop the election, they burned buses. You know, they threw the arsenal, and innocent people were killed. It was more than hundreds of people being killed within a short period of time. It was from US Human Rights Report 2015. This report was established in 2015, published, uh, but it was uh, during the election time, 2014. And because this opposition party didn't go to ele uh, election, what they did, they killed the innocent people to stop the election. And many people, it's more than 100 people are killed because they pass in the bus they threw the arsenal and people used to die. So, uh, see, enforced disappear. Now we are going, uh, what is the democratic and human rights situation? Actually, you know, human rights situation is, will be recognized or will be in good position situation if there is a democracy in the country. If there is no practice of democracy in the country, you cannot expect the human rights in good situation. Like our, like the state, any country, there are three basic things, like the judiciary, court. Court should run, function properly. Second thing is the police department, law and enforcement agency. There should be, uh, there should be run properly, without any corruption, without any intervention from the government. And there's executive bodies. But in my country, over the years, all the parties are responsible, more or less, to destroy these institutions. While they destroy these institutions, these are the pillars of the democracy, then country cannot run properly. Police are taking their bribes everywhere. And law and enforcement agencies, they are taking money, they are using as a killer, you know, you give money and you want to kill someone, they will take money, they will kill, kill you. So this is the killer, you know, that we call killer money, it's called rare, uh, another body special force, rapid action battalion, of entry attempt. And they are using like this. And the executive bodies, you know, district, those who are in the, uh, like, uh, district in charge, government officials, high officials, some district officials, they are, most of them are corrupt. Those who are honest people, they are foreigners. Are they are they are foreigners? They don't have any voice, or they have to do the, I mean, leave the job, and most of them are corrupt. And even the judges, you know, judges, those are the judges. Are, you can buy the judges. You can, uh, if you give bribe money, so the judgment can come on your favor. So only the those who are rich people, those who are in the power, uh, in the state, they can get the judges. And poor people, middle class people, they cannot. In my country. People are very afraid of police and uh, courts. They don't want to go to the police or courts because they're afraid. They know they, if they go, they'll be loser. Even there is many torture in my country, many corruption in my country. People doesn't go to the court, very few people go. And people doesn't go to the police, they're afraid. Even the police station, some girls been raped. They went for justice or some kill the case and they're being raped in the police station. These incidents happen in my country. So this enforcement is appearance is the police and the citizen. And suddenly if any people criticize the government issues, talk about the human rights and democracy in the country, then they can be disappeared. And afterwards their dead body being found. And sometimes even the dead body cannot be found. That is called enforced disappearances. It is very common in every government that are doing these things. Actually, this is called fear environment of fear. They want to create a fear so that citizens will be afraid. So through fear they want to rule the country. In my country they call it rule and order. That means you make a rule and order it, do it. It's not a rule of law. Rule of law and rule of order is totally different thing. A country running by the rule, that is called rule of law. But in my country they call, even they call it rule and order. Make the rule, give order and do it. Sorry. So, uh, this is the man. He is from the, uh, one of the uh, biggest 
largest opposition parties for BNP Bangladesh National Party, I told you. And he was a spokesperson, Salah Abdina. He was being allegedly picked up by plain clothes men. These plain clothes men are the government people, agencies people, secret agencies people. And they picked him, and after two months, this man was found in India. Shilong, his own place in India. So, uh, and he was like abnormal. So, there are many incidents in the country that shows that they are being picked up by the uh, law and enforcement agencies. See, this is the situation now. It's a university. You see the student, and she's from my district. In Bangladesh, we have 64 districts. And uh, one of the districts, Narn, was my district. So, uh, it's called, uh, see, there is a, another sub union activist, a student front activist. And yeah, the Ismoth was tortured like this because they are protesting against some, uh, you know, uh, harassment in the university. Our one of the uh, very reputed universities in Bangladesh, it is called Dhaka University, public university. And that in that university, there is a sexual harassment case. And the students, they protested. Because of the protest, instead of taking care of the rapist or the harasser, police are beating the protesters. See. See. And usually we have the female police. The female police should take care of the female activists or any female criminal, whatever it is. But it's a male, male. How? And see, this is the garments. Another thing is, you know, how our GDP is so good, and Bangladesh GDP is better than in some many states of India. India has many states, and or because we have, uh, like, we are the second largest exporter in the world after China. Garments, male clothes. We produce lots of male clothes, and we are the second largest exporter in the world after China. Second position. Uh, in the garments. And our economy is strong, our economy is stable and getting high because of two reasons. One is the garments worker, uh, I mean the garments industry, and second thing is because it brings the foreign money to the country, second is laborer, it's called garments uh, workers. You know, many workers in the, around the world, our people are working. And it is uh, like in, in Korea also we have more than 10,000 10, uh, workers, migrant workers, those who are in the factories working legally. And in the many countries we have the workers, and they are working very hard. And by that money they are sending to the country. And this is the labor's money and the garments industry's money. By that, uh, because the foreign remittance coming to the country, our country is stable. But instead of that, what is happening, you know? Poor people are struggling, poor people are working it, hard working and sending money uh, to develop the economy and the rich people, the politicians, the businessmen, corrupt politicians, corrupt businessmen, those who are in the power, maybe 5% are poor, 95%, 90 95% they are sending the money abroad. They have big bank balance in the Swiss bank. And they have business in the Malaysia, Singapore and uh, they are sending the money it's called Pacha. What is called in English? Money laundering. Money. Money. They are sending money from country, our money, people's money, to the abroad because they are stealing this money. They are stealing from the people through corruptions, many corruptions. There is a chain of corruptions. So, actually, there are many issues. If I want to go, I cannot finish within 45 minutes. So, I leave it like that. So, what I am saying that though Cardinals industry is there, Main, one of the main industry in Bangladesh to get the foreign remittance, to get the our economy stable. The country is getting rich, government, uh, the government's owner getting rich, even government's owner, they have house in the prestigious place in Canada, USA, UK. In Canada, there is a very rich people live, some places are there, and there you can find lots of Bangladeshis, government's owners. They have built house, they have lots of money. And they are getting rich, but what about the workers? The life is very miserable. Very miserable, you cannot imagine. 
Even there is a two festival in Bangladesh. One is the Muslim majority country, and why two Eid is called Eid festival. And and why the Eid comes, the government's worker expects some bonus, small money, some bonus. It is not given. Even there are salary two months, three months being due. They are salary being due. Why they? fight for their salary, they struggle for salary, they protest for their salary, to get their salary in the festival time, they are being beaten like this by police. This is the government's order. And this is the, in many, many governments in the, even the South Korean uh, governments, uh, we have the, some owner, Young One Corporation. Young One Corporation has, uh, I think, 10 governments uh, factory in Bangladesh, Chittagong, and there are once five persons being died here and uh, actually in the working but they were not uh, taking care very properly. Jinju at the time sent me email, Jinju, to get this information. Then I went visit the factory in Chirong, then I get this information. But they're not treated well. So it is all over the world. In Chinese many Chinese governments uh, you know industry we have in the country. But governments work are being suffered a lot. So this is the another, it is called Timir Barun Chakma, he is the indigenous. In Bangladesh we have 64 districts, out of the three districts are the, most of the country are plain land, not hilly land. Like the Korea is 55% is mountains or hills. In Bangladesh we have the 95% uh, is the plain land. And only 5-7% to seven is the mountains, it's called hill district. We have three hill districts, Agrachuri, Rangamati, and Bandarbani. And these hill districts, the indigenous people live. So indigenous people are most sufferer community in Bangladesh, one of the sufferer community. Because government does not recognize them as indigenous. Because if they recognize them as indigenous, then they have to uh, follow the international rules and regulations. But indigenous people are suffered a lot because the army people, military, there's a military base, strong military base over there. And they, they, they settle some Bengalese people over there. And these now Bengalese people are more than the indigenous people. And sometimes I say that whatever, okay. So this is the another thing is going on in the, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, hill districts, the army people, they are making lots of uh, trouble in the country. Nine minutes, I have nine minutes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, there is a, another thing is violence against women and girls. There are many violence in the country is going on. Uh, the other, sir, you asked me about the women's situation in Bangladesh, right? Uh, so, actually it is not good. Of course, it is true that it is better than previous. Now it is getting, getting better. The, this government plus previous government, they did one good thing. They actually they help to improve the situation of the women in the country, and there is many uh, uh, good things also they did. But you know that still Bangladesh is a patriarchal society, and we have the Muslim majority country, and Islam it, you know, they don't give much rights for the uh, women, and and the patriarchal as far as the patriarchal society, so male are the it's a male child in society still now. But of course this is changing. The girls are getting you know educated, so they are more. Uh, Bukhan about their rights and government also trying to do some good for this. But even though some lots of violations in the country is going on, this is uh, any many rare case in the country. But many things doesn't come out. Few are in the, in the media. So this is the uh, some violence against the minorities communities, like the Hindus communities in my Bangladesh my country minorities. It was 40 years back. It was. Uh, 40, 45 years back, it was 90 percent Hindus in my country, Hindu people, and now it is 9 percent because many people left country, they went to India. So now, who are doing this? Of course, they are doing people, not the good people, some bad people. But these bad people are also sheltered by the politicians. Sometimes politicians, the political leaders, they are using the weapon, money, religion, conflicts as weapon to grab the land, to grab their houses. So again. It is the state responsibility. Even any citizen does this, the state, uh, the government has to take care. Government has to uh, bring the perpetrators in the judgment, but they don't do it.
so it's many some people have been killed, uh, been, their houses have been burned, and it's happening. So there is, uh, this is the case. Of course, there is a protest. Uh, there is a protest. Many people are protesting against this, some good citizens. Uh, bad people are not big, more, very few. But government doesn't take any issue. Again, it comes to the government responsibility. So I'll go very, through, uh, very fast because I don't have much time. So freedom of expression, if you see, uh, freedom of expression, it is very, uh, you know, it is very, 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 you know, just a few days back, there is a Facebook, you know, social media. If you criticize the government, and government, there is a law, new law, it's called black, we call it black law, 57, article 57. They, uh, if you criticize government very badly, if government thinks that it's straight, this person is straight for me, then they, it can be, can, it's called cyber crime, and you can brought under the justice, and it is a long time imprisonment. So, uh, even the social media, if you criticize, so it is very difficult to criticize the government issues in the country at present. So, there are two types of threat in Bangladesh right now for the freedom of expression. One is from the government, and another is from the extremist group. This is the Islamist extremist group. Some people are there in the country, uh, they, if some people criticize the Islam religion, they can be get killed, and even many people have been killed because they don't believe in religion. If somebody doesn't believe in religion, you know, in Korea, there are, I hear that 45% people are against. They don't have no religion. But in my country, if somebody says that I don't believe in religion, I don't have religion, and they criticize the religion, they have been killed. So this man was the one of the reputed destroyed Bangladesh, and it's called Daily Star. And why he criticized government issues very badly? He was being accused, and 83 case, you know, appeared against him within a couple of days, within two days. 83 case is Mahfuzana from the history. And this thing, the murders and killings, they're the free thinkers, very intelligent and very, uh, you know, that uh, uh, genius young people. And there is a movement in Bangladesh 19. Uh, nah, yeah, it's called nine. 2013, it's called Shabab movement. I was one of the activists in Shabab movement. So in that movement, the young generation took the uh, street for the, uh, you know, the, for the war criminals, for them to bring them justice. And at the same time, they also criticized many issues of the government. So these people, uh, uh, they criticize religion, they criticize government issues, and they are being killed by the religious extremist group, and government didn't take any action. Government say that if somebody doesn't believe in God or religion and they criticize religion, if they get killed, we, we don't care. Even the police doesn't want to take any, uh, you know, GD, general life, not even case. So see, within 18 months, it's the last year figure, 2016, uh, within 15 months, 18 people been killed. Some are bloggers, some are writers, some are free thinkers, and some are uh, university professors. And some priests also, or Hindu priests also be uh, happy with it. And the last, uh, latest killing was last year. It was LGBT because they they are the activist of LGBT, gay uh, for gay rights and uh, lesbian rights. And this is Julas uh, Manna, and uh, and uh, the another person is the Tonoy. Uh, yeah, Tonoy was hacked with it. And they, they, how they kill you, know, this is called mastage. Uh, it's called weak one, medieval people. It's called mastage, yes. And very brutal killing. So anyway, this is the last, if you see the political killing, just, uh, it is 2015. Um, there is a statistics. There is one human rights organization in the country. It's called Ainu Shanish Kendo. Uh, actually, this figure is from the Ainu Shanish Kendo auditor and our Shubhanagra Foundation, this is my organ our organization. So from these three organizations, we got the data. These three, uh, political killing was on 103. And extrajudicial killing was 21, just by the police and the red, some you know, agencies people. Then unclaimed dead bodies was found in the UK. Nobody knows who killed. And there's no action. And uh, there is a, uh, uh, pro provoked arrest was 1445 and 34 terrorist attacks. They were killed, some were injured. Some extremists, religious extremists, Islamist extremists. 
and uh, extortion by the police party of Aumili, the present party, tax, tax means the political party, they have their getters, own getters, like the criminals. They also use them uh, for to killing the opposition or the, to, to silence the opposition boys and those who critical, criticize the government issues. So journalists also 19, it was injured five, tortured 10 journalists in the country and arrested two and threatened three. So uh, this was the situation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Because it was the same country, you know? Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, uh, Pakistan was the same country. 
Why do you see the Pakistan situation? Of course, what I'm talking that uh, it's not your people are religious, but not racist. This is the political people, the politicians. They, for their own benefit, they use. Some more questions. Sorry, sorry. I think we can. Uh, yeah. Because we took. Uh, a maybe, I, maybe I wasn't clear when I said questions from the audience. That means questions from the right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. It's still, it's still a very good question. Um, so, so we'll take one question, take one question yeah. here. And How is the internet helping democracy in Bangladesh? And what international help Bangladesh is receiving from international media? Well, uh, internet. It is, of course, a great asset for, for Bangladesh, especially for the young generation. So, social media is very active in my country. Uh, you know that uh, big, almost all the young generations, uh, almost 99, 90% are on the Facebook. Facebook is very famous in my country. And Facebook in the 2013, there is a big social movement in the country, Shawa movement. That was actually organized by the Facebook. <laughs> so yeah, big movement you say organized by the Facebook. So it is it is now you can you see the mainstream media, media are biased. Media sometimes biased, not sometimes in my country. Now most of the medias, uh, electronic and print media, they are no more control of the journalists. Journalists cannot control now media in my country. The owners of the media, whether it maybe is mafia. I know there is one of the uh, very popular newspaper, Jugan <laughs> Babul is owner, Babul, he is a mafia. And there is another, Kalekonto, Kalekonto is one of the very leading newspaper, one of the five. And his owner was uh, uh, Shalom. Shalom used the uh, land draper, you know, they grabbed the lands, the real estate companies, and they steal lands, they rob the lands, people lands, and he is the owner of the one of the leading uh, newspaper. So like that, most of the media, electronic print media's owners are the very rich and they are the, all the bad people and journalists cannot do anything. They control everything. They use the media as a weapon to, to get more money, to get the more benefit from the government. So they do all sorts of compromises in the government to get their rich, to get money. But only the things, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter is not very famous in the country, but Facebook, Especially. And this is a very good asset for them. And the international, as you are talking, right? International is playing good and bad both. And I want to say, uh, bad things bring more. Like, like you see, that geopolitics is one of the important issues in present world. So many multinational companies in my country are working. Multinational companies, and they, they, you know, their their main main aim is to grab the resource. In my country, there are not many natural resources. One of the natural gas. So they they are trying to, and not trying, they're getting. And they have the association with the politicians, people. Even some uh, family members of the prime minister, or the ex-prime uh, minister, they have become the director in multinational company without any investment. Monetary, they don't pay anything. But what they do, they do lots of bad agreements with the multinational corporations, that goes against the country. The people's asset, they just a few amount they take. So it is going on. So international, uh, you know, uh, what is called, why is this? And the powers, they always concerned about their own. But few people, of course, few organizations, those are human rights organizations, democratic organizations, some good people, of course, they're trying to do something good for them. Mm -hmm. We are short as in time, so we can't take any more questions. But you can talk with Shahid after our talk. So now, please welcome Dr. Shane to give all the appreciation to so, our speaker today. Sir, can I take one minute? While I am talking about my country, actually I feel bad. So many bad things I have to say. But why I speak this? Even in my country when I was there, I used to speak. Even I got and I attacked many times, but not only me, many people in the country. But I speak because if we don't speak, things will not be changed. And we should, re when we are representing my country, when I know that people are bad, good, people are good, but politicians and leaders are bad. So if I don't say you exact figure, then it is, it is, I'll be hypocrite. If I don't, you tell you the truth, 
the truth should be taken and now international geo in the world of geopolitics it is an important factor then may it may create some pressure on the government to make the situation better thank you thank you
all together, many initiatives, many small organizations, all together will be used. In fact, uh, I looked up this name uh, at the internet, and you can find tens of mentions on his acti activism, including the experience of being kidnapped. He was uh, such a bad person. She was a <laughs> kidnapped. <laughs> In my country, there is a police case. If the police see me, they can arrest me. It's called Shen arrest. It is called uh, the three. I have the three warrants. Uh, the eight case against me, criminal, all the criminal cases. Uh, and <laughs> so I'm so bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> she was even knocked down. And uh, she looked like, the, like a dead person. That's how he survived. Yeah, they thought that I'm dead. They killed me. And I'm very, many things. <laughs> Many times I've been beaten, and then last time they wanted to kill me. They thought that I made mean, They hit many places of my body, and they, they thought that they cut my pain, so I'll be dying after the bleeding. Uh, so they never thought that it's done. But luckily, I was <laughs> rescued by my journalist and writer's friend. They pressured. I have many friends in the journal. Of course, when you work sincerely, you can make some good friends. In the country also. Okay. If I have one more question here, it will take ten or twenty minutes more. So I will still I want to hear him talking about this uh, comment about uh, last year's uh, candlelight rallies in Korea. As a as an act, fun, uh, activist, what kind of impression you got from that observation? Thank you very much. They asked me questions. And uh, I have some friends, like uh, Kundula is here. He did PhD from Trinidad University, from Bangladesh, from my country. I'm happy that he's come. Now she is from my country. <laughs> <laughs> she is very her undergraduate at Trinidad University. My friends from Dinesh, Stevi is here. Dawn is here. We are classmates just studying. I'm happy to see that. My, actually, she was my boss. In May, uh -huh. our foundation director, ah, in Ray, my very close friend Luis. I'm so happy to see, to see all of you. And actually, you know, that at the time, we used to go. When the candlelight BJ movement was going on, we used to follow. Even today, I made some PPT also on that, about the candlelight BJ movement later on. So, to make my many people around the world, my friends, to know about what is going on in Korea. Because international media at the time, you know, BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, many, 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 especially BBC, CNN, Western media, they did the negative, not positive report about the candlelight busy movement. It is very funny things, you know, many medias. So what I did, I made some PPT, I spread out my friends, whatever we had. At the time, Dinesh, Don, Steffi, and we used to go to the <coughs> town hall to attend this candlelight busy movement to uh, protest we attended. So it was a great experience for me and of course from my friends. And this, you know, that peaceful movement, actually at the time we know on our on our assignment, course assignment was comparing the Guangzhou Democratic Uprising and the candlelight busy movement. So this is the great thing, the peaceful movement, how can make a big change in the country. But one thing, sir, I want to tell you, this peaceful movement is not possible in my country right now. This peaceful movement was not possible in Guangzhou 1980. Because now at least you have some certain democracy. You have you have you reached certain democracy level. Your judiciary is working very fine. How was observing the impeachment was going on in the parliament? Even Pargunes, her own party, some part member parliamentarians went against her. And there is impeachment. How the judges, there is a corruption case against her. How the judges function, court functions against her. So in my country, you cannot imagine this. So what happens, you know, it is because of, of course, uh, the, there are certain democracy established in South Korea. That's why this peaceful movement was possible. But main thing is the people's power, people's voice. Nobody imagine. Even some senior people, I hear some senior people at the time say, uh, no, no, it is not. Uh, it, 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 would, it would not be a successful. But at last, it was successful. Mm -hmm. So this is the people's power. When it comes united, many peoples together, then can get a big change in the country. It was a great learning for me.
Um, you may need to talk more, but uh, I won't give you any more questions. <laughs> in fact, it is our privilege to work with. Uh, oh, I'm I'm in turn in JC. Sorry. Oh, you did mention right? Uh, I did mention. Uh, so I am now interning. It's my semester vacation is going on in my university. Uh, so I am interning in JC, and I am really happy to be interned here. Before that, I was interned Beijing Memorial Foundation. I was interned one year over there. And I'll be always grateful to this nation because I learned a lot and still I'm learning. Even though this official name is income since it's dispatched from the university requirement, but still we consider him as our important fellow and the researcher. Rather uh, appreciation for Mr. Shahed Kayes. We'd like to thank you for your uh, support to, uh, G to GIC as a guest speaker. This is a topic on human rights and democracy in Bangladesh. Good luck for your activism. Thank you. Thank you.